And Darius, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Good to see you too. Yes. Hi, hi yes. everyone. I'm looking forward to saying hi at Ocon, Iran. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad you could. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So I'm hearing a narrative um, that's I think is it's starting to emerge. I think it's starting to emerge quickly. And I want to know if you you're hearing it and how you would respond to it. Um I'm hearing it from friends and and loved ones here in Los Angeles who are sort of left in, who consider themselves left of center, even if just moderately. And mm -hmm. and it it goes like this. We we accept Israel's moral right to to do most of what it's doing in the war and defend itself and go after Hamas, but. It's Netanyahu who is the problem. Uh, we we just don't trust him. We hate him so much. We hate his politics, um, and he's the main reason why so much of the world is is against Israel. Not because of all the other things like anti-Semitism, yeah. uh, and kind of giving themselves an excuse to actually be against Israel because of the of how much they dislike Netanyahu. And I know you've talked poorly about Netanyahu many times in the past, but for different reasons than, than yep. they did. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a convenient scapegoat. I, I don't think that it's anything more than that. And unfortunately, because of Israeli internal politics, it, it gives it some legitimacy. The, the, you know, a lot of Israelis don't like Netanyahu. There are demonstrations pretty much every day in, in Jerusalem and in Tel Aviv demanding that he resign. And look, he, God, I mean, he has still not said that he would resign because of October 7th. He has still not taken any responsibility for what has happened, which is pretty spooky and 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 pretty pathetic for a politician. But, but for them, I think it's not about anything other than he represents, I don't know, he represents toughness because they don't know, like I know, that he's really a wimp. They think he's tough. And so for them, it, it represents actually Israeli toughness, Israeli will, it, willingness to stand up for themselves, Israel's willingness to actually execute on the war, to, to do what is necessary. And, and so they hate him for, for his virtues, even though they, I don't think they're real, but that's what they hate him for. And, and that is pathetic. That's sad. And, and it's, but it's an easy way for them to deflect because the reality is, in terms of the actual what's actually going on in Gaza, there's no the opposition in Israel agrees. There's there's nobody in Israel saying, oh, you know, the military operation is wrong. We shouldn't go to Rafa. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do that. There's nothing. I mean, some people would like more negotiations, but even that, you hear Yair Lapid, who is the main opposition leader right now, he's like as tough as Netanyahu when he speaks. On, on on Hamas, and mm -hmm. but so so but from the outside, instead of American American liberals, leftists saying, "No, we don't like what's going on in Gaza," um, let's just you know they they just blame Netanyahu, make him a scapegoat for what's going on. Uh, but but I agree with you. It, it it's it really is. They really don't like Israel defending itself. They really don't like what's going on in Gaza, and it. And, uh, and and it's just convenient this way to rationalize in their own mind. No, 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 I'm for Israel's self-defense. Let, let me just blame Netanyahu for everything. And, and, and it, you know, and, and there's a sense in which it's a little bit like that within Israel. It's not just here. Even in Israel, I think part, part, of, the, part of the, some of the people in Israel have the same attitude. But you're on. Um, isn't that just very common in all our approach in Western countries? I mean, it's always just, oh, get rid of Saddam, everything will be fine. Get rid of Putin, everything will be fine. It's just, it's it's always like that. I find that. Uh, I think know, just, I think that's yeah. right. I think yeah. it's a superficial understanding of what is actually going on. It's a yeah. It's a it's a certain it, it's a rejection of the importance of culture and importance of ideas. Uh, it, it's a focus. It's a, a sole focus on kind of the individual, with the political leadership. It, it it gives our politicians a lot more power. It assumes they have a lot more power and a lot more significance and a lot more influence, and they really do. They they yeah. really don't have that much. 
power, influence, and significance. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree, Amlan. It's it, it is a cultural white phenomena. It's particularly true in in times when uh, things are going bad. I mean, look, it, 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 I don't know. Um, we have this tendency in the U.S. all the time, right? The economy is doing well. Oh, it must be Trump's fault. Trump, everything he's doing must be causing the economy to do well. Or, or Bill Clinton or whatever, whoever it was, right? Or, or, right? or there's there's inflation and the economy's not doing well. So it must be Biden's fault. So so we have this very short-term memory and we, we attribute everything that's happening in our culture to whoever's on top. And the reality is that presidents have, particularly when things are going well, very little impact on the economy <laughs> and yeah. very li a little impact on what's going on and, and uh you know and and a, a lot of times the bad stuff that's happening is because of two presidents ago the things that they did are, are, are now we're feeling them whether it's good or bad right so uh jimmy carter actually did all the deregulation that generated the good economy out of ronald reagan and ronald reagan got all the credit for it not Jimmy Carter, and and uh, you know the, the 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 same goes for inflation. It takes a while for inflation to pick up. So uh, the fact that Trump was already inflating in 2020 because of COVID, uh, we only felt the inflation in 2021, 2022. So we blamed it on Obama. So it, on uh, on Biden. So it's yeah. I mean, people don't think these things through and don't have the right approach to really think about it and and to divorce it from the personalities. It's so much easier to think about the Trump economy or the Biden economy than to think about the actual causal chain of events. And it's exactly the same phenomenon with Bibi, with Netanyahu.